What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Juice Move Live back with another last video. Today, we got They Should Have Never Let This Happen by Jimmy Hyrule. Let's check it out. Do you want to see something interesting? Here's a chart of every single teammate Giannis Antetokounmpo has played with in the NBA. That's every player in every season for the past 10 years. And they're all plotted based on how good they were. In Bro, I hate NBA talk because it's what the fuck am I more? What am I even? What is this chart? Fucking stars and what is this chart? more win like i this is why i hate nba it's never about talking about shit that matters like we talking about win shit more product what am i looking at bro like terms a bunch of, of bullshit. Plus minus and win shares now over the years Giannis has played with a lot of guys oj mayo jabari parker he played with jason he terry does. for two seasons kind of a weird overlap but his best like, teammates have all came in the last few seasons. Brooke Lopez, Eric Bledsoe, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday. There's some good seasons in here by some good players. And Giannis has made the most of it. And then there's his new teammate, Damian Lillard, who will easily be the best player he's ever played with. That's a fact. The NBA's got a new super team. And right now, they're the favorites to win it all. Who the fuck said that? Y'all be, bro, y'all be, met, who said that? Them niggas ain't winning shit. My first pick gonna be Damian Lillard. Them niggas are not winning this. That's what I think, shit. Today's video is sponsored by C. Pass loads hey, in every shit for you to lose that could save off this if you're first in some conference to play on the literally up on Damn. decades. Just to get, I saw my Blazers fan off your first purchase. Let's get it. As a Blazers fan, I've seen some dark days. Oh, you're days a Blazers I fan now. Wish on my <laughs> Jimmy Hyrule, I watched like 12, 200 of your videos. I never heard you say that. Enemy. I saw my team rally their way to the conference finals for the first time in two decades just to get swept and never return. I've had to it's watch the player that we passed up on turn into an all-time great, while the guy we picked couldn't even stay on the court. I watched Brandon Roy blossom into a star and then retire literally 50 games later due to injuries. This is enough to make a man go insane. And then the chosen one, our loyal king, the one glimmer of hope in a bleak and desolate really all franchise, the making movie, man. just packs up and leaves to the Bucks. One thing I hate so fucking much, and it's so disgusting and weird to me, is how Damian Lillard gets praised. He, this nigga gets praised off of buzzer beaters, I'm guessing, or whatever the fuck he ever did for you in y'all eyes to be good, whatever. But people really talk about Kyrie and say, what has he won? Dame's better. What has he... What the fuck has Damian Lillard did? Kyrie is sitting on a ring and niggas still saying Dame has done. What the fuck has Damian Lillard did in the NBA? He's not close to as skilled as Kyrie. Anything. He can't do anything like like none of that. That's out the way. So then it's achievements. And Kyrie has. So what are we like? What do you? What did? What did? I used to like Dame. I used to like Dame. I don't know why I stopped like not. I don't even not like Dame. I just like talking shit about him. I'm so serious. I don't even not like Dame. I just love talking shit about him. I don't know why. I don't. Maybe because if y'all compared him to Kyrie, that's probably it. But what what does Dame do to be so glorified? Let me know in the comments. Bro. And we get stuck with lost, DeAndre bro. Aiden, a guy Maybe we aren't even going to keep, most clutch a rookie, out. and a seventh grader. And I'm not even sure. Bro, everybody want to do these jokes now. Blasey, blasey. Bucks acting like they gave away trash people. Y'all gave away every the niggas who helped y'all won. Drew Holiday helped you win 2020. He ripped, uh, he ripped. What's he mean, Kali? Devin Booker. He blocked, uh, Marcus Smart and got the re like. Why are we acting like niggas is not useful? Grayson Allen is a useful ass player for the team, bro. Y'all niggas just go off of names and just be saying anything. I swear y'all do. Take away Grayson Allen and Drew Holiday from the Bucks. Them niggas are not winning shit that they won. Giannis would have been doing what he was doing the first years of his career. Not shit. We, like, why are we acting like shit just like, why are we acting like that? Like, Drew Holiday has clutch plays we can really remember in reasoning why he literally stopped KD from bouncing you niggas out there. Like, why are we acting like niggas didn't just, why? Please let me know. Guy we aren't even going to keep, a rookie and a seventh grader. And I'm not even it's sure really where the crazy. Bucks came from. The Blazers and the Heat were stuck in one of it's the really weirdest, crazy. most drawn-out stalemates for the last three now, months. Drew Holiday, and out of sad. nowhere, the Bucks came and picked him up for actually a reasonable price. And as sad as I am to see Dame go, I'm happy for the guy. Despite everything he's given to the Blazers, the organization never quite put him in a position to win. The man has been in the league for 11 seasons and has played with only one All-Star. And even that was nearly a decade ago. 
In fact, throughout his career, Dame has made seven All-NBA teams, a feat only 46 players throughout the history of the NBA have. Blazers, like, on some real shit, the Blazers dead ass does not give him my nigga nothing to hoop with. On some real shit. But if you want to be 100 with it, him, like, bro, I don't know why we keep thinking two fucking, two of the top players in the NBA have to, no, we don't need that. It just has to be some niggas who know how to play around each other and do good around each other. Having two stars on your team ain't gonna just be a certified fucking ring every year, as we see all the time. We see it every year, literally. When the year he had CJ McCollum, like, well, the years that, like, that, that they could have had a good team, really. If they had a different big man other than fucking uh, Valentina is low key, could have, you know, they probably could have had a better chance. Like, uh, shit, a top big. I can't even think of no one. Accomplished. And out of these players, only 13 of them never won a championship in the NBA. And these 13 players, whether active or retired, are all regarded in Wait, the What is this? Players who have made at least seven oh, all NBA teams. In dismissive fashion. All time greats who never won a ring. Only four of them are active today. Chris Paul, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and Damian Lillard. And all four of them have reached the same you point put in their seven just because of that was the borderline of what Dame careers. was at, bro? Don't be the guy who had a stellar career with all the awards and achievements, but no championship to show for it. And so after three months of uncertainty, I think this is about the best case scenario not only for Lillard, but for Giannis and the Bucks. In fact, this trade was actually foreshadowed last season. During the 2023 All-Star Draft Wasn't selection over every other All-Star reserve, Giannis picked Damian Lillard with his first pick. That must Back mean in Luka 2022, going to the Lakers, Dame right? was asked who he would play with if he could choose any active player. His answer was Giannis. Shit, never Fast mind. forward 18 months, and they both got their wish. So now that he's on never the mind, Bucks, they and they it both out. got a teammate that far exceeds anyone else they've ever played with, Bro, you how good is this that duo, is, you actually? We've seen countless pairs of superstars get hyped up Bats. with grand expectations. Don't, don't put the Nets up there. They played three games together. They couldn't play because of a lot. Like, don't act like they didn't hoop because basketball reasons or they just lost two people. That's not even possible to happen as we've seen when they all played. So stop trying to put them in this narrative. Stop with the Nets narrative. From now on, we have to stop with this Nets narrative. We got to stop acting like KD, Kyrie, and Harden lost games because they were not better than the team they played and they flopped. No. Kyrie had new Just rules set on him every week. He couldn't hoop. Harden was hurt, and KD was hurt here and there. And KD, it was just KD versus the world. He still did what he did with it. Let's stop with that narrative. Short Please and that achieve game. essentially nothing together. But if history has shown us anything, this duo is bound to do something great. In terms yeah. of box plus minus, it could there be. have only been six duos in the history of the NBA that were as good individually as Giannis and Dame are. And out of those six duos, Four of them. Like, what is a BPM? Both had a B break per bonus per. What? Is, like, this is why I hate NBA talk because y'all always putting in bull. Bro, it's so much LPM, D, H, K, P, O, D. Like, it's so much abbreviations for bullshit that doesn't matter. I swear to you. What the fuck is. Maybe it's something obvious and I, what is BPM? Like, come went on, on to win the NBA championship that season. The only duos that didn't were Harden and CP3 in 2018, who lost to the eventual champs in the conference finals, and Durant and Westbrook, who were one game away from making the finals. History has shown us that when two players of this caliber pair up, it usually results in a championship, or at worst, a game or two away from the finals. We're looking at we'll potentially see. one of the best duos of the last few decades. Okay, y'all are forcing it. The only thing I'm saying is like, okay, we know that they are two great star dominant BPM average players. It's just this nigga Dame is a dominant ball handler who shoots a lot. And Giannis is a dunking nigga who runs and dunk and he needs the ball a lot. Uh, I, I On some real shit, I don't think I've ever, does Gian, like I don't watch Bucks games. And when I do, I don't see it. Does Giannis literally like set screens and run plays? Or does he get the ball, run and dunk? If he don't have the ball, he's literally sitting near the post trying to get the ball. Like he, I don't know. Does he like set screens and shit? Let me know. But uh, I couldn't picture the gameplay. After a game and I see how they're going to do it, then maybe I'll say, oh, yeah, they they can, they can win it this year. But I don't know. I don't see how they're going to play Last season, That's Dame averaged thing. 32 points, 7 assists, and I'm not 4 saying, rebounds oh, a game. Now, to win. those no. are just historically great numbers. That's a stat line that only Michael Jordan, James Harden, and Luka Doncic have ever achieved. 
in the history of the NBA. It's not Even the hard crazier, you ball. Dame did all of this on record high efficiency. And last season, Dame, Giannis put up 31 score, points, 11 that. rebounds, and five assists per game. A stat line that hasn't been achieved since Wilt Chamberlain did it nearly 60 years ago. Fake we all know just how dominant Giannis is, but I think spending the last decade in the shadow of arguably the greatest point guard ever has made Dame one of the most underrated stars. He's like five five point guards below, like stars in the league. But underrated. See, see, niggas just both be of them are coming off of historically great seasons. We haven't seen a pair like this since KD joined Steph and the Warriors back in 2017. In fact, the last time in modern NBA history, two volume scores of this caliber paired up was never. Over the last 50 years, there hasn't been a single duo that averaged at least 30 points per game and then played together in the following season. Not Kevin Durant and James Harden, not Curry and Durant, not LeBron and Wade, not even Kobe and Shaq. But it's not just how dominant Giannis and Dame are, it's the fact that their games perfectly complement one another individually Niggas defenses are forced to, to scheme loud. against Niggas dame and Giannis oh, in polar opposite ways Bow. but together there's not a team in the league who has the defensive personnel to cover the deep ball and the pick and roll and the low post just think That's every single attempt at creating a superstar tandem in recent years involves two players that usually have similar strengths and weaknesses as good as Kyrie and durant were their games didn't complement one another Kawhi. This is what I'm talking about. They keep making up narratives, bro. Stop making up fucking narratives. KD and Durant were unstoppable. They lost because of when they did play together healthy. Every team is double teaming, triple teaming them two niggas and leaving every other nigga on the court open because no one else can make a fucking jump shot. Let's stop acting like teams is just like, bro, these, this is why I don't like NBA talk, bro. It's just a bunch of dick riding favoritism, biased narratives. A and PG That's are great individually, really but as a whole, their shit. skill sets are far too similar to create a real dynamic offense. Most of the time, just taking turns on who's going to get the next Just acting possession. like the Clippers Even without LeBron injury, this is a team that's going to get knocked off. Like, like if the Clippers... And like if they wasn't healthy, they wouldn't have probably really went. Like, let's stop playing. Oversized bro. forwards who tend like, to play away from the basket and dominate possessions one turn at a time. For the talking, exact bro. opposite reason, this is why I think the duo of Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic work so well. Two completely different but compatible play styles. Tell Aside me, from Murray, who isn't riders. quite a superstar, and Jokic, the last time we saw a duo that was made up of two megastars with complementary skills and positions was two decades ago with Shaq and Kobe. Riding. Damian Lillard's demand to be traded wasn't some breach of loyalty. It was an attempt to regain control of his career and earn a real chance at winning like many others before him have done. How many <laughs> all-time greats Should put their loyalty it. first and foremost and paid the price because of it? Guys like Reggie Miller, Dominique Wilkins, Patrick Ewing, generational talents whose careers get lost in the shuffle because they've never climbed to the top of the mountain. They never overcame the final obstacle it's not even and won about an loyalty. NBA championship. Only a it's fool almost like all the all-star selections and big Only a loser would call performances and playoff she. wins become an afterthought yeah, or some up, sort nigga. of relegated achievement because the ultimate goal was never achieved. Is it better to stay with one organization with hopes it's that things will eventually work? It's a whole different story. If you a nigga work. like making it to the, you making it to the, uh, you got a great team, y'all just playing it like losing and not making it nowhere every fucking year. Your team ass get the hell out of there. Making it almost, making it to the championship two years, then the next year making it to Western Con champion. What you do? You know that's a different story you just, it's just like you know what i mean losing because of y'all not playing that good or the team is playing better and y'all just got to get better is different than just playing with trash niggas work out despite things never i would quite leave working if i was dame i would never after years of holding up your end of Three the deal years, is it better to peace. finally do what's My best prime, for you and peace. put yourself in a position to win i'd be like a well, westbrook type the nigga, answer lies with suck. the players who did put themselves first in the mid-2000s, yep. Kevin Garnett's incredible talents were being flushed down the drain in Minnesota. And so he said enough is enough and went to Boston, a move that changed the course of his Winners. career and legacy. If Kevin Durant never left OKC, we may not know him as a two-time champion in the finals that, in the P, won a chip but rather another sure. generational Easy. talent who could never quite get it done.
even LeBron James, all made the decision to leave the franchise that drafted them for an organization that actually gave them a chance. He came at back and won one though. Let's not act because stupid. loyalty and fans and Let's accolades aside, here. above all, every player wants to lift that trophy above their head and be crowned a champion. Something that was never gonna happen with Dame in Portland. So what do y'all think? Is this duo true? I think we just gonna have to see right now. We are going to have to see. I don't know when the NBA season starts. I think it starts pretty soon. I'm really happy to see these two play together, though. I ain't gonna cap. Uh, no bullshit. They better win a ring. Shit, they better win a ring. Coming from the two niggas who, who blab they mouth the most about this and that. Loyalty, people needing super teams. Uh, this and that bullshit. And they, like, that's my only problem with it. These are the niggas who cried all day about that shit. Now look at them. Come on, man. But if y'all like the video, like, comment, subscribe, check everything down below. Till next time, we out. Peace.